All right, today we're going to be digging into the front end on a Polaris four-wheeler. Uh, this is, happens to be the Magnum 330 model. All of the differentials that don't have the Hillard clutch in the clutch assembly or in the front wheel assembly is going to look real similar to what we're doing today. The style that has the, the all-wheel drive that is actually engaged by the clutch inside this front wheel hub uh, is going to be slightly different, and I'll, I'll show you one of those videos as well. But this is going to be the style that they've got um, the engages the all-wheel drive from the front differential. So. four 14 millimeter lug nuts on the holding this wheel and tire on here so we've pulled those and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this front wheel off you can see a little bit better what we have going on so like I was saying this is the this is the actual hub and there's not gonna be what they call the Hillard clutch or the all-wheel drive clutch pack in here and those are a, a very common problem on the models that had that um, so we will do a video on how to rebuild the, this cap here um, comes on here to protect this nut and the axle here. You just take a flat screwdriver, pry it off, and then underneath of there, you've got a cotter pin holding this, um, this larger nut on there. And this cotter pin will have to be pulled before you can uh, remove this nut. And I don't like to reuse these. This one's obviously been reused because it is all beat up. So we can pull that and then we'll just end up throwing this one away. Uh, we've got your brake caliper here, and it's, it's a hydraulic brake uh, caliper, so you do have fluid coming down through this line here. We've got a banjo bolt on the back side, and it is held on with a 13 millimeter. I'm going to show you how to uh, replace these brake pads before we pull this line. So in order to replace these pads, you don't have to pull this banjo bolt, and you don't even have to pull this cap here. We've got the wheel off. Uh, we're going to remove the two screws that are the two bolts that hold this caliper on. I believe they're going to be a 13 millimeter as well. And the top one's a little bit more of a challenge to get to, so we're going to actually going to add kind of a swivel extension onto our uh, socket there. And we got that one off. Now you can see the speedometer line runs down into this brake caliper holder here. And that we're going to pull off. I believe that's a 3 8 uh, bolt there holding that on. Now, as far as the brake calipers, or the brake pads, what you're gonna do, these are in great shape. Um, you wanna make sure that this is able to move back and forth. So you can see it there, moving back and forth. That's exactly what you want. Sometimes you gotta clean all this debris out and you should do that before you replace this, uh, these brake pads. But if you take and push this all the way back, those brake pads will just pull out um, the bottom there. And then to get your new ones back in, you do the same thing. Just take this rubber boot here is where it's where it's pressing in, take and push that all the way in, then you can just pull the pads out just like that. If these pads weren't in um, as good a shape, obviously your piston's gonna be pushed in here. It's gonna be a lot harder to get your larger pads in there, your new pads in there. So what you're gonna do then is up on your handlebars, you're gonna wanna pull that cap off at the, the master cylinder. Uh, pull that cap off. Then what you can do, and you do it with the, with the a uh, larger screwdriver while the old pads are still on and then you want to make sure this is all cleaned out and in great shape uh, You can take stick your screwdriver in there and push on this and it'll actually push that piston back into the caliper And so you can fit there will be more room here to fit those pads in You want to make sure obviously that you're wide enough to slide right on this disc here now obviously um, We're we're not replacing those pads, so I'm just gonna Keep on going here with this uh, front end disassembly. We're gonna get that uh, speedo, speedo line taken off of here, and then I'm gonna actually go ahead and pull that brake, that banjo bolt, that brake line, so that we can move this caliper out of here. So 3 8 bolt running through there, there's your speedometer, and then the line runs out, kind of follows your brake uh, lines, or your brake hose all the way up. You've got uh, um, zip ties, kind of holding that together. So you can take, so you got one more here. Make sure if you're cutting these zip ties, you don't cut the line, and you definitely don't want to uh, make a hole in your brake line either. So I'm gonna grab a 13 millimeter socket, and go ahead and pull this brake line. 
As soon as you do that, you are gonna have fluid come out of, if you have the other side pulled off, you'll have fluid off coming off the other side as well. So that's removed. Make sure you've got washers on either side of your brake line here, and they are a special washer, so make sure you get, uh, if you're replacing those, make sure you get special washer for those. Now to remove the tie rod, uh, you've got another cotter pin here. You straighten those out. Now I like to use side dikes so you can really get a hold of it and you can just kind of pry it out there. And then those ended up breaking because I didn't straighten them good enough, but if we replace them anyways, it really doesn't matter. So that one's out. Now you've got this bolt that's gonna go all the way through. 17 for the nut, 15 for the bolt running through there. We've got the washer on there. Lift this bolt out. You've got a washer in between here, so make sure going back together. No washer up top, washer in the middle, washer below, then your nut. So that's the order of that. Those tie rods will just sit there to adjust those tie rods. You've got a lock washer or a lock bolt here, uh, loosen, depending on what you need to do here. You can uh, go in or out with these, and same way with up front there, you've got a lock nut as well. So those are fairly easy to adjust. Next, I'm going to pull this hub off of here. 24 millimeter nut here to pull this off. And then those don't have to be extremely tight because they do have that uh, cotter pin kind of holding them in when you go back together. Okay, we're gonna keep going here. This bottom bolt, uh, which is connected to this uh, knuckle here, there's a pin running through there, so we take Pull that cotter pin out, and that's a 14 millimeter bolt on the bottom there. And then no washer on this one. And then to pull the front skid plate off of the, it's a boot protector is more like it. You've got a uh, T25 Torx head. You've got three of those Torx screws, and there's your guard there. Your A-arm is exposed. Make sure your boots are in great shape. Make sure there's no rips or tears on there. Now to pull this, this, act, this entire hub here, we're gonna need to pull this brake line off of here. 13 millimeter. And you just basically have to take that nut off of there. That'll allow that clamp to fall off of there. Then I'm gonna leave this nut back in here because it holds this shock into this knuckle here. There's another clamp, another bolt on the bottom here holding that on as well, but I'm just gonna leave them both. Now to get this bottom, um, this bottom uh, ball joint off of this A-arm, what I like to do is grab a, a crowbar now I grab a small hammer. Now I don't like to use a pickle fork. I don't like to use a pickle fork because you will for sure damage um, the boot down below here when you use a pickle fork. So I like to take a crowbar, kind of wedge it in between there. You don't have to go very deep with it. And then I take and I just tap on the A arm. Make sure you don't end up hitting the boot, otherwise you're gonna rip it anyway. And there it goes, it's gonna pop right out there. And that way your, your boot it doesn't get damaged. You can see there, there's no rips or tears in the boot. This one does seem a little loose. And I might just go ahead and pull this entire spindle as we're gonna do that anyways. We've got a 19 millimeter up top here. You're not gonna be able to see it, but I just go ahead and, I like to just hold this shaft up. And I take my impact and remove that 19 millimeter nut up top there still hanging on to this shaft otherwise everything will just drop let's see i was hoping we could get it out of here there we go i'm gonna set everything back on top there to keep that in the same order since it's not attached to the a arm i think we can probably get in behind here and tap on this uh, so we can get this off and put this in a vise. Now what we're going to do is pull this drive shaft off. I'm going to set this in a vise. 
and then I'll put some uh, lubrication down in the splines here and then run some lubrication in the splines here or in the, in the back of this uh, hub here. That way we can try to get some lubricant in there and work that hub off of there. But the hub should just slide off typically and then you can replace bearings in here and uh, we're obviously needing to do that. Now to get the axle off, you just go ahead and start tapping or pulling on it here. And this, uh, a lot of times we'll take quite a bit of pulling, especially on this model of Polaris. I've seen it take quite some time to remove these. You gotta be careful you're not pull, pulling the four wheeler off the lift. But it's not necessarily the amount of pressure that you're putting on it as much as just how you do it. Seen before we've worked for days to pull these off and then one day just kind of pulled, came and pulled on it about three times and it just pulled right out of there. So now I'll be able to put this in a vise, kind of hold it up there and tap this uh, shaft out of here and remove that hub. So we're able to get both of those, everything off kind of together there. And then your A-arm is the last thing here as far as your front suspension. Okay, now these can be a little bit tricky. To get your A-arm off there, both your bolts, uh, they work together in the same bushing all the way through there. So you'll find that when you're removing this, if, if you don't hold the other side, the entire thing will spin. So what I do then, I'll loosen one side up a little bit, and then this side I'm not able to get an impact on as well. So I'll loosen this up a little bit. If I see that when I'm loosening this up, that this side is spinning, I'll put something on there. But I don't ever take and loosen this one all the way, or I don't ever take and loosen this one all the way. Otherwise, there's gonna be nothing holding the other side. So you gotta do them a little bit by a little bit, until they're both loose enough to where you can just remove them by hand. So we've got them both out probably an eighth of an inch. Take and do that one about another eighth of an inch. And if you work together, and you may not, I've seen it to where you can only do about a sixteenth of an inch out at a time. So you just do about a half turn at a time, and at some point you'll be able to get them off. The other way that you can do it is pull one side, and then if you're not using that bushing and that A-arm anymore, what you can do is take and kind of turn this, and what that does is kind of uh, kind of puts pressure on that bushing inside there and keeps it from spinning. I don't like to do that because a lot of times these bushings are good. And the, if you damage the seal area up here, uh, that's not good either. So I just take and loosen these a little bit by a little bit, but there's never been one I haven't ever been able to get off doing it this way. So then. Now we're able just to pull them both off. You've got a lock washer on there, another washer. Like I said, that's 14. Now we're able just to take and walk that front A-arm off of there. You know, inspect that, make sure those things are in there are good. Now for your front prop shaft, um, you've got a, a joint here and a joint back here. The joint in the back here, I would suggest, it's got a grease cert on it. I wouldn't suggest greasing that, it makes that a little bit easier. And then to remove the front, um, I grab a punch, I'm gonna make sure that it's, it's a smaller one. If you grab a, if you grab too big a one, you're not gonna be able to fit it down in that hole, but you also don't want one so small that it just pushes the center of the little pin out. But if you got, if you may have to jack the back end up, turn it to where that push, that spring pin, is in the right spot and then I take and I just tap on it just like that. If you get too small of a pin in there and all it's doing is pushing the center, what you're doing is widening out that spring pin and you're actually doing more harm than good because you're spreading that spring pin out instead of pushing it through. You wanna make sure that Sometimes what happens is you get going along and you push it in there so far that you're actually hammering your, uh, your punch into that joint and then you've got to try to push it back out the other way. So, a lot of times once you get so far you got to stop and uh, do it, use a smaller pin that way you're not getting, getting it stuck in there. Like I did there. 
Now you gotta come from the other side and push it out, but there is your pin there. I don't suggest reusing these, although I have been known to do that. Now I come from the other side. Push it out just like that. Make sure there's nobody standing on the other side when you do that. Now you're able to actually push that drive shaft back. I tap on it like, like this. I think that you can get it back far enough. All right, now it's off there. Now you kind of move it in an area where you can get it up. Now we're gonna push it back the other way. You wanna make sure you're not damaging up those splines. And sometimes what I do is I take something to get in here to try to get it a little bit straighter. And we've pushed it clear back onto this transmission shaft. And I'll take something like this in here and we're replacing these U-joints anyways. Try to put, keep an eye on the front, make sure it's not wedging it into an area. Sometimes these are lubricated enough if you've kept grease in that grease cert to where these almost will just slide off. All right, and that prop shaft is out. Just kind of walk it back that way. You can see there what we were, there's a, a, um, a snap ring or an O-ring in there. That's a, uh, an O-ring in there that was kind of holding us up. So getting that lubrication in there helped. It would have been best to keep that lubricated the whole time with that grease cert. And so that is the front end and pulling the prop shaft on a Polaris four wheel drive ATV. This happens to be the Magnum 330 model. If you like my video, uh, please like and share this. Please subscribe. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have comments, please share those below as well. Thanks for watching.